Hello there, Sandy Yearns from FormerServe once again. In this how to and IBMI video set, we will take a look at expanding our web services we created in the previous couple of videos. This video will wrap up our SQL web services suite. In this video, we will add two new endpoints. Well, I say two, I really mean one, and point you in the direction of creating one yourself. To get notification of when the next video in this series is released, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like and subscribe. It is appreciated. Let us get on with this video. We will be covering three points in this bite-sized training on IBMI. We will add a delete endpoint to our web service, so that rounds off the maintenance of our web service. On completion of this, we will be able to fully maintain a table on the IBMI. After adding the delete endpoint, we move on to testing. And to round things off, we move on how we document our API. Very important. And as they say, stay tuned folks. Into the Apache admin page. Here we can see my web service. I'm sure you all know how to get to this stage point now. So here we have my SQL web service up and running. To do anything with it, we have to stop it first. Then when it's stopped, Press the redeploy button. Nothing to change on steps one to three, just keep pressing next. Then on step four, we add a new endpoint. I'm gonna call it delete customer. Then paste in my delete SQL statement. Delete from qiws.qcustcdt, where custnum equals question mark. So once again, using parameter markers for the custom number to delete. Then press continue. Now select the delete customer endpoint and change the prime parameter to custnum. Then we press continue and next. Then step through the existing endpoints pressing next until we get onto step five, the delete customer. The first thing to change is the HTTP method from the get to a delete and the URI path to backslash, then in curly brackets, Custnum, which will hold our customer number. And then change the input type to path param, just like we did for the get individual customer endpoint. Keep pressing next until we have been through all the deploy stages and back on managed services. Refresh that, still installing, and now stopped. Click on the managed service again and press start. A couple of refreshes and it's now up and running. And you know where we're going next? Over to the postman. Once the postman, Nettie said fireman then for some reason, moving swiftly on. I'll open my QCUS CDT collection. Here we can see the existing tests we already have for our endpoints. As I said going through the creating of the Apache wizard delete endpoint, it is very similar to the insert endpoint. So I'll copy that URI first. I'll start a new request by clicking the plus button at the top. Then I'll change the HTTP method from a get to a delete and then paste in the copied URI. Then I'll save the new request. I'll call that, but you can guess, delete customer. Now that's saved, let's give it a test. I'll bring up all the customers first to make sure we have a record to delete. Let's go for record one, two, three, rolls off the tongue. Back to the delete request. As we can see from the URI, if we run this request, it will, hopefully, delete customer number one, two, three. I'll send that request. And as we can see, we get an HTTP return code of 200. All looking good. Suppose I had better show that record no longer exists on our table. I'll call the individual customer endpoint with 123, and there we have it. No record exists for 123. Our delete endpoint is working. You can see I've also added a count endpoint. This is very handy for testing purposes. If you've been following this series of bite-sized training, I'm sure you will be able to quickly add a select count statement to a new endpoint. Let me know how it goes. And now we move on to the most hated job as a developer, documentation. 
Good documentation is an essential part of any API or web service. Good documentation helps the people who use your web service to understand what it does and how each request works. API documentation lets your clients or customers know what endpoints are available and how to interact with them. So what options do we have for API documentation? Having a good look around, here's a list what I can think of are the top six players in the API documentation field. We have Swagger Hub, Postman, Readme, Document 360, Redocity, bet I've said that wrong, and Stoplight. Which one is the best? Who knows? It's down to personal and company preference. As we have used the Postman throughout this series, I will now show you how to use the Postman for documentation. Back to the Postman. While Postman is primarily recognised for its API testing capabilities, its documentation feature are often overlooked. When you open a Postman collection, down the right hand pane is documentation. Easily overlooked. With Postman, you can easily add descriptions to each API request and folder using either Markdown or Rich Text within the app. Once you've documented your collections, you can publish your documentation on the web using Postman's hosting service. This provides a public URL that you can share with your internal team and clients. If you need any further details about open source or IBMI, check out all our videos at learning.formaserve.co.uk and the articles we have written for powerwire.eu. I hope you find them useful and let us know if there are any other topics you want us to cover. In this video we covered some significant features and benefits of IBMI. We hope you found this video informative and helpful. Learn from our experts and boost your skills on IBMI. Visit our website today and sign up for our training courses or buy us a coffee to show your support for our creative work. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.